My name is Elena. I'm from um, Manchester, but I'm in Newcastle at the moment. It was just a few months ago, actually, around December, when I brought um, a Muslim acquaintance of mine, and I took Shahada there. Um, it was just near a mosque, but not actually at the mosque. This is a funny story. But I had no plans originally to date Shahada and it was just a very spur of the moment thing. I think things clicked for me and a lot of the research I'd been doing just clicked and I just decided to take it even before I got to the mosque. I had many because I think um, a lot of what we see in the media is very biased against Islam and also there's a huge like um, cultural difference. Like A lot of people like to bleed into like culture instead of Islam and they conflate the two. So once I learned that, you know, this part is culture, which part is Islam, then um, I start to understand what Islam is really about. Um, mixed feelings. So it's, um, a lot of it was like happy um, that I had found something that I think um, gave me a grounding in life, a perspective, a new perspective on life and understanding, you know, my purpose and morality and where everything comes from, what's the meaning of things. Um, but a lot of it was also a bit, um, the negative side, I guess, was how do you explain that to your family? Um, <laughs> how do you explain the cultural differences? How do you explain the differences between scholars and the different madhabs? Um, and there's also like, how do you implement that in my life? There's a lot of research to do, so yeah. Well, I've always been fun history and I would also knew a bit about Christianity. I also went to Catholic school before and I also knew a bit about Judaism because I was really interested in researching about it. And it's when I learned that there is these, Islam basically encompassed all of it for me and it made it click, it made it make sense. And when I read the history about it as well, um, it made a lot of sense, especially from the Bible when they're talking about the frustration and what we cause to do when your head to the floor. That was one key sign that um, Muslims were doing something correct. <laughs> I'd say definitely it's still like an ongoing kind of battle as in people who do know me very well and are very close to me, they understand. Um, but for people who you know are less, a little bit less close to me, there is still like work that I have to do. And I understand because it took me quite a while to you know, become familiar with the concepts and actually find what the truth is. So I'd say that I wouldn't expect it to be easy and to anyone who's trying to convert, I would definitely say don't expect it to go plain sailing, but also don't think the worst. Yeah. Well, I think um, off the top of my head, well, for people who enjoy having this like community, like a strong community sense or like a brotherhood or sisterhood, just literally drop into a mosque one day. It can be any day when you're free and go and talk to people and you find out the loveliest people ever and a lot of what you see in the media isn't true but for people who like um, researching and the, you know studying out Quran themselves I'd say look at the Sira, like the life of the prophet and start to you know look at the historical documentation about the time when Islam came and the rights of women before Islam especially and I think you'll start to see a lot of things make sense and that Islam wasn't bringing oppression or anything like that that you hear so yeah <laughs> I found out through a friend of mine on who I met along my journey and she um, was a really lovely, kind, beautiful person and she introduced me to IDC at the Ghost Dawa and they invite and welcome even non-Muslims to learn about Islam and it's a really beautiful thing. So I think um, if you have something like a Dawa center near you or you know um, somewhere you want to pop by and chat and ask questions then definitely go. So one of the big things as a revert, I guess, is you expect that when you stumble across, especially when you learn that God is most merciful and omniscient and he knows everything, you may think, you may look sometimes at people and especially reverts look at people and think, why did this earthquake happen like in Turkey, Syria? Why did bad things happen to these such good people? And they kind of conflate the two. So I think I just want to say that if bad things are happening in your life, that could just be a test. And that's a really powerful thing. It's a really powerful thing when you go into Sajud because it's basically teaching yourself and trying to ingrain, you know, 
God or Allah doesn't need worship. It's for you to understand that you're not meant to bow your head down to anyone. You're not meant to be subjugated by anyone or manipulated by anyone. Like anyone, meaning your boss, so anyone in your family, in-laws. It doesn't matter what kind of rights they think they have over you. They don't have it unless the Quran or Sunnah states it explicitly. And that's a very powerful thing to have.